Hey, this will be my first introduction video to trading. It's a series of, I think, six or seven videos where I'll try to address some misconceptions about skins, educate people on patterns, floats, etc. The first video here will just touch upon the differences in steam prices versus cash prices and some of the misconceptions that uh, people have about that. So one of the first misconceptions in trading is that casual players will usually assume that their skins are worth whatever the steam market price is for the given item. So in this case here, you have an M9 Marble Fade. This is listed for 685 euros. So people assume that's what it's worth. They'll probably message another trader and ask them, hey, do you want to buy a Manai for 600 euros, thinking they're cutting them a good deal. But in reality, an M9 Marble Fade can be bought for less than 500 euros, 467 to be exact, on other marketplaces. You can see here in the currency converter that is 464 euros. The reason this uh, is the case is because the marketplaces operate with what some may refer to as tokenized funds. So once these funds here on Steam are deposited, they can never be withdrawn and they will be stuck on the platform unless you spend them on games or in-game items. So one may think like, well, why wouldn't Steam just allow players to withdraw? And while I'm not an expert in this area and it's not that relevant, I assume it has to do with money laundering and the fact that CSGO cases would legally be viewed uh, like gambling then. Therefore, the selling and buying of CSGO skins mostly take place on third-party sites where prices are about 60 to 70% of the Steam reference price. If you're still not convinced that your 100 euros on Steam is not worth 100 euros in cash, just consider this. Any given player can go on one of the aforementioned marketplaces, buy a knife that is 30 to 40% under Steam price, sell it on Steam, and then after fees, the 100 euros you spend on this item and sold it on Steam will give him around 120 euros minimum. So there is no way that your Steam funds will be considered one-to-one -one of the value. You can simply not get your money back. If you deposit money on Steam, you've already lost about 30%. So now this site that I just showed before where this M9 Marble Fade was 464 euros compared to the 680 on Steam is buff. And why is buff such a good way of telling prices? Well, as you can see here with this M9 Marble Fade, which is a very expensive knife, it has 480 on sale. One of the reasons that there are that many listings of expensive items on buff is because it's very accessible, like meaning you can list your items without having them leaving your inventory. This is a huge benefit to a lot of players that would, you know, they're not necessarily wanting to sell, but they'll list their items. And if they sell for the price they want, then, you know, they're happy. So, and also the fact that, you know, Buff is a Chinese site and a lot of the skin traffic comes from China. So this site has an insane supply of skins, but it also has an insane demand. And that brings us to the point where if you're looking at M9 Marble Fates here, there's a lot of people that have listed these knives for prices that are not realistic. So if you search by the price, you'll have people listing for insane prices. Some might be because of the float, but some just put random prices but you also have the people competing to sell so you can see here 3740 chinese yuan then 340 40 35 34 30 so people are undercutting each other so you know here there is a constant competition on selling the items which is naturally driving the price to be as representative of the real value as it can be that's why buff is such a strong player um, in the cs market and also in terms of determining what your items are worth. If you go on a site like Skin Baron, this would only have maybe five listings. And that item would then, you know, it, it, it's a lot more likely that the listings are inflated or it's not really representing the actual sales. But on Buff, because the volume is so insane, you actually have listings that translates directly to sales. So you can see here, the sales are about the same as the listings. The ones that are a bit above here are probably because of the float or the pattern of the knife. But generally, you won't see a huge gap here as you will with the Steam Market, where when you looked at the M9 Marble Fade, you can see that the, the listings are 685 euros, but the request to buy are 620. And if you look at the sales for the last month here, you'll see that they're typically selling for around 625 euros. So that's like three different price points. The list price, the average sales price, and the buy orders. This brings me to the second misconception, thinking that Steam reference price is correct. 
So many people will go on Steam, they will look at the list price, so the cheapest is 685 euros, and they will assume that's what my knife is worth. When you're trading and attempting to value your skin, Steam's lowest listed price is a great reference if your skins are on the cheaper spectrum, or what people may refer to as liquids. But once you start trading items that are worth a few hundred euro, or you will often find a huge difference in Steam prices from list price to the actual sales on Steam. And that brings me to the example of this M9 Marble Fade, where we can see that the, they're selling for around 626 euro on Steam, but the cheapest listing is 685. And you can find examples that have way larger gaps than this one. You can even find maybe like a survival knife slaughter stat track factory new that is very uncommon and not sold often that will be on Steam for 1500 euros, but it's worth 200. It's just because there is not a lot of traffic on Steam. So this, the list prices are not representative of the real value but they are on the cheaper skins. And this brings me to the following rule. Expensive skins or skins with few or no listings, you shouldn't trade without doing more research into the liquidity of the item and its actual selling price. So liquid and illiquid are common terms in trading, liquid referring to items that are fast and easily converted to cash without a substantial loss in value. Whereas illiquid items are items that have a greatly varying price and take longer to sell. So now let's talk about trading your skins. How do you figure out if you've made a good trade? There are several ways to do this. If you trade on Steam alone and never venture into cash trading, then studying the Steam graphs of sales would probably be the right thing to do for you. I, could re I can recommend reading this guide. It should be on the screen right now and also in the comments. So here. My method of pricing is very simple. Before looking at the chart, I asked myself, what is the price I think I could sell this item for in two to three days on the market? Then I analyzed the last month, especially the last week of the graph. It's easier to show than to tell, so let's take a look at the picture on the right. So this is just to explain to you that you can go into more depth with analyzing the Steam sales. And when you do look at the Steam sales, you'll get an actual idea of what the items are selling for instead of just looking at what they're listed for. And then you can obviously start looking at like downtrends and such, uh, such, but mainly I'll recommend you just to look at the quick sales. Like what are the items lowest selling points? What are some of the, like the median selling points and stuff like that? You can look into more of this if you, if you read his guide. Um, but what I personally do and which is what I'll focus on, which I think is the most effective way of doing this is actually utilizing buff as we have been talking about it many times. So, since Buff is the largest marketplace and has this insane volume, it has so many listings of almost every skin in CS that the prices are insanely representable of their actual values. And this is a huge benefit if you're trying to figure out if your trade is giving you a profit or not. So while Buff operates with cash prices and you're doing Steam trades, it's still giving you a very, very accurate idea of the profitability, uh, profitability of your trade. So an example I'll show you here is I'll go to my trades and I'll find an example that is uh, that is good. So here, this guy Lex sent me a, some Eric gloves, a minimal wear Vulcan for my field tested fuel injector and my Emerald gloves. So in this case, you have some floats that might add a bit of value, which also wouldn't be shown on Steam. So in this case, what I would do to figure out if this trade is worthwhile, I'll go to Arid in field tested. Then I will go to the float range here. I will select this one, and then I will show the cheapest the lowest float first. And then I'll simply go here and then look at the 29s here. So that's $260 for the cheapest one I've found so far. And then I'll go look here again on this page. Should be some more 29s here. So this one is 274, 263, 266. So this one would probably be around 266. The Vulcan here is a 0.09 minimal wear. So I will search for Vulcan Mint, and then I will select the float range of 09 to 10. And again, because there are so many listings, this will be representative of the value. So this you can see is 102. Now on the other end, you have my items here, which is an AK fuel injector in 0.28. That would be just market price for that one, which is $50 plus my Emerald gloves in my Emerald Web Gloves in 28. So these will do the same thing again. We'll select this range here and then sort by the lowest float first. We will scroll down until we find 28s. And then I know these don't have any pattern that adds a lot of value. So we'll just look for the cheapest 0.28 listed. So 316 so far, 308. I have mine for 304, 303. 
So it's it's will be around 303. So here I'm profiting $15 on this trade. So I could consider, you know, this also has some decent stickers. This app might add a little bit of money as well. So this should be a decent trade for me. Now, do I want to do this trade because of trade hold to profit that relatively speaking, not a lot of profit, you know, that's up to you. But this trade would would give me a $15 profit. But on Steam here, it's at $55. That's not true. So this just shows you that you can get a very accurate idea of how profitable or not profitable your trades are by looking at buff prices. The extension I'm using here to show this price is called CSGO Trader App. CSGO Trader App is also made by the guy that I highlighted earlier, uh, Gary. And this app can be downloaded on Chrome. There will be a link in the description as well. You can change the price on the Trader App to do the buff prices as well. But again, this wouldn't factor in the float. So I would always recommend you to do this price checking yourself and then add it up because you will have a lot more accurate idea of the value doing that. So now I'm on CS Money and this is a site that a lot of casual players use to trade their items. And a lot of people ask me, you know, what, what is the best place to trade your items? And I'd say there's no good place to do it. Another way to do it rather than losing money on doing it on CS Money or all the other trading sites is actually just going on uh, Buff and listing your item there for the lowest listed. And because the Buff Marketplace, as we touched upon earlier, has an insane amount of traffic, you're actually very likely to sell your item if you put it for the cheapest price. And once that's sold, you just go and buy the item you want. If the seller doesn't deliver it within 30 minutes, you can cancel it and then resend it for another knife of the same uh, type. And that shouldn't take more than a few hours if you put the price uh, correctly. And in that process, you'll only lose about maybe 3%. Right now, let's just take an example. There's this bayonet slaughter here for 398. So let's just search for something I can get in that kind of uh, price range. This is a survival knife crimson web. It's 397. So I can trade this for this and it's $1 difference. So let's just look on buff right here. You can see my bayonet slaughter here is $296. It's cheapest listed. It should sell within a short while. Obviously, it's only one RMB cheaper than this one. So, you know, I could lower this like a few dollars more and it would sell faster. But then this survival knife, let's have a look at what that costs on buff. $234. So this trade will lose me $50 on CS money. But if I do it on buff here, You'll have $50 extra you can buy after you've done this trade. You can buy, you know, an AK, an AWP. You can save the $50 in buff bounds for another trade you're doing. So this might be a bad example to highlight how you see us money. But in most cases, this will be the case. So this is something I would highly recommend people doing if you have a little bit more patience. Sell it on buff. Don't use buff to cash out if you're not comfortable with selling the, the Chinese uh, currency afterwards. But... Just use it to trade your items. It's a lot cheaper than CS Money. It's a lot cheaper than any other market uh, trading site. And this applies to almost all items. So now we will start talking about cash trading. So selling your skins for cash and not doing item to item trading. So we've already established that Steam funds does not translate to real money. And the same with CS Money funds. They're not worth real money. So if you want to sell your items for cash, you may think, you know, Buff is such an amazing site with a lot of representation of value. So, you know, why wouldn't I sell my skins there? Well, if you sell your skins on Buff, you, you will be left with Chinese balance that you cannot withdraw unless you have a Chinese credit card. So what you can do is sell your Buff balance to other users, but this is not really a thing that many casual players want to venture into. So what I would recommend is just using Buff as a way to check what price you should list your items for on another site. So the problem is that many people will list an item on, for instance, Skin Baron, and then there are only four listings of their item, and then they'll think, well, if I just put the cheapest one, it'll sell. And that's not necessarily the case. So if you wanna be sure that your price has a possibility to actually you know, sell for that price, then cross-checking on Buff to see if your listing is too inflated is a very good way of telling if you're listing your, your item for a correct price. For instance, if an item on Skin Baron is listed for 400 euro and the same item costs 400 euro on buff, which operates with a 2.5% fee compared to Skin Baron's 15% fee, you're actually only getting 85% of the 400 euro once sold. And due to that commission, 
you may want to list your item a bit higher if you aren't satisfied with getting 85% of the skin's actual cash value. Therefore, always factor in fees on sites when selling your skins to make up for the commission. If you're selling your skins directly to other traders, you're normally doing it for convenience. And since these traders are looking to profit as well, anyone offering 100% or more of buff cash price will most likely be a scammer. I will address selling skins to players directly for cash in an, in an upcoming video, so stay tuned for that. I will also try to address cash scammers, hacks, and all, th all these things that you should be aware of when, when selling skins for cash. Hope you enjoyed the video and peace.